Joining me now is Christopher Kai. He's the author of Big Game Hunting. You've written a book about basically networking with billionaires and celebrities and executives. So let's start with the basic question. What's the biggest networking mistake that people make? They don't do enough research. They spend more time going planning on their vacation than they do on a networking event, which according to ABC News, 80% of our jobs are based on networking. So how do you do this research in terms of networking? So you go to any conference, they often tell you who the attendees are. So I would suggest people go to the attendee list and they'll literally say, hey, 40% are senior executives, 20% are middle management, so always do your best to do the research and find people that are consistently going to Milken level type conferences, CGI, Davos, anyone who knows those really big brands that cost over $10,000 to go, they know what they're talking about. So finding people that are going to those events or just going online and finding the specific attendees that go and they usually oftentimes tell you who's going to be there. All right, so you get to the event, now let's say there's somebody you actually want to network with. What's the next step? So I have a, what I call a three second rule which is if you see someone you want to meet, just walk up to them. And people often say, oh, Chris, what do I say? Compliment them. Oh, that's a great necklace you have. Thank you. <laughs> have you been to this conference before? And just have it really simple and easy so that you can build a rapport. And ideally, you just do some research so that you, have, you know what they're about, specifically with charities and whatnot, so you can just help them. Because the, one of the biggest common challenges is that they reach out to someone, that person is approached hundreds of times. But if you say, hey, Dr. Patrick Chin Chong is the wealthiest person in LA. The first time I met him, he has the same name as I do in Chinese. I said, hey, Patrick, I actually, we share the same name. No one in the entire room of 300 people said that because I spent the time to research. I also met his wife, Michelle. So spend the time to research these people because that's the only way you can stand out from the people that they meet every day. So what has networking done for you personally? From a philanthropic standpoint, I started the only homeless youth program of its kind at the largest private shelter in the US. I've gotten people like Elon Musk there. We literally came for a half hour and spoke about success and how you build that through relationships. So philanthropically, I've built this amazing nonprofit uh, charity. Professionally, I've met some phenomenal clients where I would never have had that level of clientele if I had not aimed high and thought about these big gamers, which I call people of influence. So business-wise, personally, just meeting some cool people. I met a person sitting next to me on a train ride from Boston to New York who's actually a former Navy SEAL and he has his own company, he's getting his PhD, but I introduced my friend who used to be a law student in California, she met up with him in DC, they ended up going out and now they're engaged. <laughs> so from a friend standpoint, from a business standpoint, or philanthropically, on all three fronts, it's been a phenomenal benefit. What's the biggest mistake that most people would make once they actually get up the courage to have the conversation? They don't get their contact information. They give their card to them, but according to the National Sales Executive Association, 2% of sales are based on the first contact, but 80% is based on five to 12 contacts, five to 12 follow-ups. So the biggest mistake is people don't follow up. How about celebrities? Isn't that a harder nut to crack? Because it would seem that they're approached so often by fans that they might not want to deal with at the moment. Yeah. They are, so that's why you focus on the charities that they're interested in. So for instance, I went to a, a gala, The Art of Elysium, which they partner artists and filmmakers and fashion designer people with critically ill kids. Johnny Depp was there. So if you're a Johnny Depp fan and you know that he goes to these type of functions, always focus on their interests and their passions because that's the best way to lead a conversation as opposed to what most people do. Oh my God, Johnny Depp, I loved you in Pirates of the Caribbean. He hears that 6,000 times. But if you, hey, Johnny Depp, I know you're passionate about the art of Elysium. I saw you there with Amber Heard. You create a sense of, oh, wow, this person knows what I'm talking about, but it's about giving of service so that they know that you're a person of generosity as opposed to just everyone else. All right, leave me with one story, your favorite networking story, either involving yourself or someone else. So last year at the Montage Hotel, a few miles from here, Sean Penn has his annual fundraising called Help Haiti Home. I walk out of the gala, and right there, 15 feet away from me, is Elon Musk. $10 billion, Tesla Motors, PayPal, SpaceX, founder, don't hesitate, three second rule, walk up to him and say, hey Elon, Christopher Kai, I saw you speak at the World Affairs Council, great job, not to say it all cool, and say, hey, I have a homeless youth program I started at a shelter, I'd love for you to come inspire my students, can I get your email? He gives me his email. Two months later, he comes down to the shelter, worst part of town, in Skid Row in downtown LA, and I get to interview him for 30 minutes, but the kids that saw him that day literally will have their lives changed. I have to end it there, Christopher Kai, great to talk to you, thanks so much. Thank you.